Hi guys, so it's been a minute, sorry about that. But before I laid this floor, I put trimmers all the way around the outside of the floor. Cause I don't know if you can remember the joists were going that way, but there was no noggins like at the ends, which we call trimmings. So the floor could flex in theory in between the joists if you were to stand on them in the end. So I put trimmings all the way around the outsides. I really would have liked to have done a video of me installing the bath. But again, like I said, I had limited time. I had to get it plumbed in. But there's not much to it really. This stage of getting the bath in, just getting it leveled. That's the easy part. The tricky part is, is making it rigid. So you don't have any of this flex. Before I seal, fill up the bath with water. So any compression in the floor or the bath itself from the weight of the water and the bath drops, so it's not gonna split the sealant. So we'll, we'll fill it up first with water before we seal. But before I do that, I will then get some upright timbers and I'll wedge them between the floor and the rim of the bath. And I'll do it all the way around, all the way around the edges so the bath cannot move. I'll wedge it up against the tiles basically so it's jammed tight against the tiles and a piece of timber. And then I'll seal around the bath. And that way it will not move at all. It'll be solid, absolutely solid. You won't have any problems if your sealant splitting. Feeds in for the shower. That was an absolute ball like this. If you can see there, the feeds for the bath, which is what I've teed off. We're coming out at an angle. I've covered the pipes. I could lag these, but because I'm not chasing them into the wall too deep, I'm not going to. So I'm basically, I'm just going to cover these in duct tape as plaster and cement can eat into the copper and cause a leak two or three years down the line. It doesn't happen always, but it does happen. I have been called out on several jobs before, but there's been a leak and I've had to chip away at the plaster on the wall. I need to find a piece of copper pipe there with a pinprick hole and it. it's been leaking for weeks. done these recesses like this diagonally and not one on top of each other in the middle like I originally said I was going to do. Well, after further investigation I realised the other side of this wall is lava and plaster. Now if it is plasterboard I could have just cut this stud as you can see right down the middle there's a stud right down the middle there. I could have cut that at the top and bottom of the recess location but I could probably have removed it without doing too much damage to the other side. But because this is lava and plaster and every single one of these lava are uh, individually nailed into this stud. There's no way I'm gonna be able to remove that piece of stud without absolutely destroying the other side of the wall. So it's gonna stay. So I could have done one either side. It will look like I've had to do that because there's a stud in the middle and I didn't want that. So I thought if I offset them and do them diagonally like this, it'll look more intentional. I've removed, I've had to scrape back the back of these laths because there's the plaster, you probably saw it in the video but that all sticks out. The problem with doing that is, of course, there's no key as such for the plaster on the other side to adhere to the um, laths anymore. So when I stick a piece of plasterboard back on that, I'm gonna stick it back on with tile adhesive on the back, and I'll glue that onto the back of these laths, which will then adhere to the back of this plaster, and hopefully stop it falling off the other side. <laughs> Yeah, bidet toilet that I've ordered for this bathroom. It has to have a separate valve, basically. You can have a surface mounted one where the pipes are on show on the wall, which I didn't want, because I'm refurbishing the whole bathroom. We're retiling, so I want to hide all the pipe work. So I've gone for a concealed one. Now, originally, I was going to stick it on the same wall as the cistern on there, just for ease, because the pipe work's already over there. But these tiles on this piece of wall took the plasterboard with them. And so because I had all of this stud work exposed, I figured, you know what, it'd be more suitable sitting here. So it's kind of in front of you when you're sitting on the toilet. So this is what I've done, basically. This is where the cold feed comes up. I've come along here and I've come out, basically, this is gonna be connected directly to the system for the ordinary operation of the flush. So it'll, it'll operate the system fill. And we've gone into the stud wall. I've used plastic in the wall, just for ease to get through the studs. and for the flexibility. 
and then it comes with this concealed valve, which I've got all plumbed in now. I put this little nugget in, I've got it clipped so it's quite solid on there. And then using the flexi plastic pipe again, we've gone back down into copper, into the wall, and it's gonna come out just underneath the cistern, basically. Hopefully it's gonna be nice and tucked up, tucked out the way, you won't see that, because there is a little flexi hose that basically goes onto the end of this into the back of the toilet. Now this is the stage where I'll, I'll spend quite some time working out the positioning of the tiles because I don't want to end up halfway through the job realising that I've got a tiny little cut somewhere like above, you know, along the ceiling or along the floor or something like that. So I like to spend a fair bit of time working this out. You certainly don't want to start with a whole tile on the floor because most floors are going to be up and down. So although that might work perfectly well here, by the time you get round to the other end, you may be an inch off the floor or you may have to be forced to shave like five mil off the bottom of the tile, which will be an absolute ball ache. So, <clears throat> and you don't want to start with a whole tile on the bath as well because baths are never perfectly flat. They usually have a bit of a banana shape. So you don't, you don't want to be stuck with a whole tile there. So what I'd do, let's say this is a whole tile here. I'm going to drop it down a bit and we'll say we'll start there. And then I'll mark all the way up the wall where each tile is going to go on the wall, which you can see I've done here. There's a mark there, mark there, mark there, and then a final mark there, which as a hundred mil tile cut around the top is not ideal. But before we go any further, I'll just take a quick measurement of that. See, that's a hundred mil to that mark. If we come around here to the window wall, that's 125 mil. So that's going to leave me with a 25 mil cut of tile above that window, which is going to look awful. So I don't want that. So what I might do is I might drop everything down about another 30 mil. So it'll work well with that. But then I just need to check how it's going to fall with the bottom of the window above the door and these recesses. So let's have a quick look at that. So I tried dropping the tiles down 30 mil in order to get over that problem above the window. But in doing that, I dropped it down 30 mil and it then meant the tiles set about 10 mil below this recess, which is annoying as hell, kind of that, because this is a feature wall and it's got to, it's got to look pretty good. So I've just bit the bullet and I've decided we're going to start with a whole tile here where the window is, but it's going to stand proud about 10 mil, just give me a little bit of wiggle room and allow me to get some adhesive under it. By the time we come around here, it does mean I'm going to be just over four inches off the floor. Which is not ideal to have a four inch cut along the floor, but I think that looks better than having a tiny sliver in the recess or above the window. And because it's above the floor, it almost gives that illusion that it's like a skirting board, if you like. So that's what we're going with. We're going to get start there, four inches off the floor. That then allows me to have nice cuts all the way around this recess. I don't have any silly cuts above the door or along the ceiling or anywhere on the window. And we'll have about two thirds of a cut above the bath. So it looks good everywhere. The only place is the four inch around the floor. But let's face it, there's gonna be a vanity unit on this wall. And you're not really gonna be looking along there. Do you know what I mean? There's, there's hardly anything to see there. The thing, the place that is gonna catch your eye is around the window, along the ceiling, above the doors and the recess. So as long as they all look okay, I'm happy. We're going to have to make a sacrifice somewhere. So it's going to be the four inch cut along the floor. Hey guys, so we're getting there. Starting to get some tiles on the wall now. And I'm really loving the look of it. It's been a bit of a struggle because actually the, the tiles have got a bit of a bow in the middle here. So to try and get them to sit flat here and here is an absolute nightmare. Ideally, I probably should have caught a bundle of them. So instead of having this join halfway through that tile, should have had that join a quarter of the way through and it would have been easier to hide that bow in the tiles. But this is the look I'm, I really wanted, so I, I'm just persevering with it. So this is where it became tricky, because obviously we're gonna have mosaics down the middle here, and the middle up there. I wasn't sure whether to put them in the middle of the bath or the middle of the window, but the missus has said the middle of the bath. So that's what we're going with. But to try and work out my cuts in such a way that I wasn't gonna have a silly cut at either end or beside the windows, I was, Bit difficult but this is what we're going with in the end so we can't be off that we've got a bit of a small cut there 
but it looks like this tile is just folded around the wall so it doesn't look quite so bad actually and this is what we've gone with at that end but we were hoping we kind of replicate that because this is a whole tile beside the mosaics we're hoping we're going to replicate it on this side but that would have meant a silly cut down there so that's basically the best we can get with that so i thought i should just mention this actually because this is a place where people quite often come unstuck so when you go on either side of the window like this especially even with these tiles actually that it's not a complete straight line if you hold a straight edge against the edge of these tiles here they kind of go in slightly at the ends and that's common with all ceramic tiles it's just when they're put in a kiln they shrink and warp a little bit so that's, that's perfectly normal but what that means is if you just rely on your two spaces um, from this tile to the next tile the whole lot can start leaning to one side and if you've got one leaning to one side that way and one leaning to the other side that way when you try to join up again in the middle you might not even have enough space to fit a whole tile back in the middle in order for it to match so it's good practice just to like where I've got my grout line there I've marked it where it should start here and then I'll put a straight edge all along here with my level and that way I can follow that mark all the way up and I'll do the same on this side so when I come to put my tile in the middle I'll have the same size gap in that middle there as I do down there good good practice get a line down the side of your wall like that Siento yo por vos Es cada vez más fuerte Ahora todo tiene sentido Esto es lo mejor que he vivido Por si no lo has comprendido Me quedo contigo Ay amor 